This one is about to be a banger. So if y'all couldn't tell already by the thumbnail, I'm doing Bangalore's Heirloom. Super juice. I am a Bangalore main since I got Apex on PC. So I've been playing Bangalore since I've been playing on PC. I have over like 3,000 kills with her. So I'm really excited about getting her heirloom. This is going to be my second build that I've already done. I've done race heirloom. Now it's going to be Bangalore's heirloom. So I'm glad y'all are here with this journey. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into those files. So now that I'm in Kira, Kira Slicer, we can go ahead and put on the Bangalore heirlooms. So I sliced three different files for this. The first one I sliced was the all the little features that you have to put together to make the whole heirloom. This is the first print I tried to do where they all failed because I didn't know what I was doing. And I had it standing up just like this. And you can see where it's red. It needed to generate supports and I didn't generate supports. So this one failed. So I printed them like this, uh, generated supports. So I sliced this up and over to print. Okay, so everything has been printed. I printed off the base and the handle, the pommel. I also printed the blade in a clear PLA, which I had to do some little finagling inside a slicer, but it ended up working out perfectly fine. The only thing I wish I'd done different was change the PLA so the lights won't shine through as clear. It'll be more dispersed throughout the blade. But I think I did what I, I think what I did will look really good. I already did a light sanding of all of the, the parts so that I can do a dry fitment test. Also, I kind of dremeled a little hole for like the button. I drilled down for all the electronics to go through the blade and into the handle. I still have a little bit more do, to do in the handle but then I'll be done and get ready for uh, the sanding, the primer, and a little bit of putty to get all the things nice and smooth. Okay, so getting the lights inside of the blade turns out to be a lot more difficult than I thought it was gonna be. I tried to just put two of the halves together after I sliced them, and I did it in a clear filament. But what happened was the light was too thick for the two slices together. So I thought about just dremeling like a little hole so I can put the, the lights in between, but that didn't work either. I ended up taking a spare piece of plastic, attaching the lights to it, and then kind of uh, gluing the sides together so that they have like a little rest for the, for the lights to go into. Once I got the lights working, I sliced them off, and then I started to uh, glue the rest of the, the blade together. That's where the problem came in. Because after I got it all glued together, the lights didn't work anymore. So I had to scrap the whole thing because there's no way I was going to be able to get the lights out and find out why they weren't working. All right, so this is just a test of the actual blade. I did got it to light up. I have to hold it very carefully because it's not glued in or nothing like that. It's just dry fitted. This is everything what it's going to look like. I have the back of it. Well, I have to cut down the, uh, the sharpener, but the sharpener does come out and there's going to be magnets attached to the bottom of it so it can stay attached. Also going to be Magnets attached to the, the battery compartment that I built inside of the handle, and that's gonna be attached by magnets as well. And then there's an on and off switch right here that turns it on and off that we're gonna have. So it's actually pretty cool that I got it connected all together on a dry fit. So after the whole dry fit and got it primed and ready for paint now. So we're heading to the paint booth. I gotta get it painted. That way I can get this video out. All right, so painting is finally finished. I'm glad that's over with. The paint job came out really good. I'm really happy with the yellow I chose. I think it looked just like the kind I saw in the pictures. Also, the white. Priming it is one of the things that you have to do first. You have to prime it properly because once you prime it, the paint lays on perfectly. And also, what you want to do is you want to lay down your base coat first. So for part of it, I did a white and then I was going to put the yellow on top of it. The other part, I just laid the yellow on top of the primer. I really, 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 really wish I just laid the primer on, or I'm sorry. I really wish I laid the white on first 
and then put on the, the yellow. It'll look so much better. So now that I'm doing the detail work, I had to do fine black lines going down the pommel, and I think, what is it called, the ricasso? Somebody will tell me in the comments. But that was really tedious, and I do not have a sturdy hand. So my white lines are shaking, and I think at one point I smudged one of the lines. I had to like clean it and, and fix it and stuff like that. But with the detail works, it's finally starting to look like Bangalore's heirloom, and I'm really happy with the results. Now that the detail work is all finished, it's time for that montage. No one drifting, catch you slipping, won't be back in bed. No one drifting, catch you slipping, won't be back in bed. Roll the riches, lot of fishes, so we throwing nets. Light is shifting, magic land, I yeah, we back in bed. No one drifting, catch you slipping, won't be back in bed. No one drifting, catch you slipping, won't be back in bed. Man, I am so happy how this turned out. The LEDs look really good on it. I didn't think it was gonna show up, but they showed up and they look great. So because I had to build the LEDs in the light, it actually doesn't fit inside the, the sheath anymore. So I can't really put it in there, which I'm glad too, because it actually messes up the paint when you try to keep going in and out with it. So I didn't want to put it anywhere. It was going to mess up the paint, but they're nice. The sheath came out really well too. You can see the lines that I messed up because I do not have a steady hand. But man, I'm super stoked about this thing. The switch on it looks really good. I got the sharpener on there. I have the sharpener on there. It has the butt. So it comes in and out, it's magnetic. Comes out perfect. The switch, so on the back where the switch is, where it turns on, I have the battery compartment. So this is also magnetic. It comes off and it shows you so basically when you want to take it off to change the battery, there's a little compartment back there so you can actually take it out to turn it back on. And then you just put this back on, which stays on because it's magnetic. <laughs> I'm super stoked about this. This looks so good. Oh my gosh. All right. What would y'all have done different? If y'all could have, if y'all could have made a different choice, what would y'all would have done? What should I do next for my next heirloom? I'm super excited about this. I want to know what you guys think. What should I do next? So I already done the Wraith heirloom. I just finished up my Bangalore heirloom. Tell me in the comments what I should do next. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Follow me if you haven't already. Man, this is so badass. I'm super excited about this, man. If y'all enjoyed this content, I'm gonna leave a link down so you can see the actual Wraith build that I actually made. Come back and see me. I appreciate you guys for tuning in.